And I thank you all for showing up this morning, given the weather forecast that we're having. I think the river is already showing up in a different form with little droplets of rain for us to be refreshed and to flow with and to know that we are safe here at One World Spiritual Center. Joan, I want to thank you for the reading that you did this morning. And I also noticed the quote that I have to share with you today from Lao Tzu is printed on the front of your bulletin. And I invite you to just look at that with me as I read that, okay? Life is a series of natural and spontaneous changes. Don't resist them. That only creates sorrow. Let reality be reality. Let things flow naturally forward in whatever way they like. Now take a deep breath. In whatever way they like. That's not so easy all the time, is it? For the last several weeks, Melanie's been talking about awakening. She's been talking about change. And last week when she was speaking about change, she talked <coughs> a lot about transitions and that process and honoring that process. And so I wanted to take it a little bit further, if you will, down the river and explore that wonderful thing, that wonderful experience that I know none of you have ever encountered before in your life that begins with an R and ends with an E. Perhaps sometimes you call it resistance, perhaps sometimes you call it all kinds of different things. But I wanted to take a look at that with you this morning because I don't know about you, but at times in my life when I have engaged in that exercise, and that's what I would call it, like the board would remind us, resistance is futile, right? <laughs> so when I've engaged in that exercise of resistance, my experience has been one of exhaustion. But I will say, you know, there are many different ways to look at things, and as a fitness person, a fitness trainer, and being very aware of how we can work with all kinds of energy and not label it good or bad. Energy just is. Wouldn't you agree? Mm -hmm. And perhaps you have connected with the fact that you are an energy being in this amazing physical body. But one of the ways that we can strengthen ourselves is with what is called resistance training. And in the fitness world and in our bodies, oftentimes that is when we push up against something or resist it for a moment, hear that word, for a moment, knowing that in that moment something is happening. But if we continue to resist, <clears throat> exhaustion sets in. What I'd like to ask you to do for a moment is just put your hands together like in a prayer position in front of you, just very gently. And just feel your hands touching one another. And just notice the energy that is present. Okay, now begin to push your hands together. Really, just push and push and push. Put something into it. Just keep doing that. So keep doing that for the rest of the service. <laughs> <laughs> and get back to me on that. And we'll have it up and share our experience of perhaps exhaustion. And tomorrow you'll be calling me or texting me going, Jeannie, my arms are so sore today. It's, you know, life is so funny at times. We engage in things in activities, but oftentimes we are just not conscious of them. So I'm not calling resistance good or bad, I'm just saying it is. And like Lao Tzu points out, thanks again for the leaders, when we engage in resistance, oftentimes what happens is we notice something shifts and changes within us. And we can label it sorrow, we can label it something but perhaps there's an energy that comes from that resistance that simply does not feel good. Because the thing that we are pushing against is perhaps what? What is a, one of the most infamous quotes I know you all know? What we resist persists. persists. Correct. And it can get so big that after a while it consumes us. After a while we begin to lose our identity. We begin to lose a sense of who we are what we're about, why we're here, because we've been so engaged in this exercise of resisting. 
Dennis Merritt Jones is one of my favorite people. How many of you are familiar with him as a writer? If not, I really encourage you to check him out. Dennis Merritt Jones, he writes for the Huffington Post. He's written quite a number of books, spiritual books. And the idea for my talk this morning actually came from him. And it was on a blog that I had read about a year and a half ago. And it was basically confronting change, the challenge of change, and asking the question, are you the river or the rock? And in, in his blog, what he, what he goes on to talk about is sometimes we're intentionally initiating the change. And when we do that, we kind of feel like we're in the driver's seat because this is something we're saying we want, we're open to, we desire, and we really would like to have that in our life. But even in asking that question, kind of like the quote and the reading that Joan offered this morning, do we feel incomplete without that particular thing in our life? Is our happiness, is our joy, is our peace of mind dependent upon a particular thing being a certain way before we can say, oh yes, I'm okay with that change because I have decided what that needs to be and I am the only one that gets to decide what it's going to look like. Rather than being open to allowing. Rather than being able to say, you know what? I'm not too crazy about what's going on right now in my life because change is happening and I don't feel like I invited it or I initiated it. It's just happening. And that can be upsetting at times. But am I open to allowing this change to occur and to take me wherever it may take me? I know when I was diagnosed with cancer in December of 2001, so you had to think back when that was, it was so long ago. But it was an experience. And it was fascinating what I learned in the world out there about cancer because it had never really been a part of my life in some kind of way or never really touched someone's life close to me. And when I got really involved with the state of Georgia and I was doing a lot of volunteer speaking with the Georgia Cancer Coalition and then I began to work for a nonprofit organization for four years as a counselor and support group facilitator, the Susan Komen uh, piece of things, there were so many organizations out there. And the word I kept hearing was fight. I want to fight this cancer. I'm in a battle for my life. And trust me when I say I'm not diminishing anybody who wants to approach it in that way. And it may not be a cancer in your life. Cancer is just a metaphor. Yes, it's something that happens in the body physically, but it is just a metaphor for something that is going on. It's an experience. And in the moment, if you really look at cancer, it's consuming me. Perhaps I'm invited to take a look at what is really going on. And am I in a battle for my life? What has presented itself to me that is asking me perhaps to look at something differently? Perhaps to look at it through a different lens. Perhaps to look at it as an experience that has come into my life to offer me something, like you just sung about, the gift, the wrongs that we can right, the things that we can change. But how do I work with this energy? If I have already decided that it is what? Is resistance a foe, a friend? Is change a friend? Is it an enemy? What is change to you? When Melanie was talking about the last couple of weeks, I think you, you likened uh, to your partner commenting about everybody hates it. We hate change. Perhaps it's just what we have come to believe about change. So I invite you this morning and for the rest of your life, if you like, if you so choose, to look at it a bit differently. To begin to embrace the dynamic of change. Static, dynamic. When things are always static, nothing happens. Life, can you imagine if life was static? We would never have any seasons, would we not? It would always be the same old, 
same old. I don't know about you, but I'm a Gemini, and that's really boring to me. And not even being a Gemini, I would find that just boring. But I understand the humanness of each and every one of us to where things are a certain way, they're going along so nicely, and then something happens. But when we learn to do align with the energy that the universe offers us in understanding what change is all about, and that transition, that moving from this place into this place and into a different form, it's still energy. It has just appeared differently. I think that is so awesome. Do you realize how privileged we are to have this information, to have all of these things available to us at any time, every single day, for us to say, you know what, today, what is that quote? I'm going to what? Be the change. It doesn't have to happen to me because if I believe in the universe where things are for me, how can it happen to me? It's not possible. So I can say, I'm going to embrace this change. I'm going to embrace the energy of this moment and allow it to carry me wherever it may carry me with the current of life, with the rhythm of life, and allow myself, maybe for the first time, to say, you know what, today I'm going to go with the flow. How many of you feel like you're pretty good at going with the flow in your life? Who we? <laughs> I've got like one or two hands, and some are like, eh, not so sure, the others are like this, you know, at least we got some movement. That's what change is, is it not? Is it not? When we, whether we welcome or unwelcome change, like that word unwelcome change, what I'm trying to offer you is just the idea of learning how to partner with it, learning how to co-create with it and knowing that you can do anything it is that you put what your mind to and your heart to. Because oftentimes the mind is what gets in the way. Sometimes the only resistance we have is what? Us. And life is continually beckoning us to open to it and to go with that flow. That's the river, folks. When you think of a river, what do you think of? Yeah, Melanie's back there doing this. <laughs> and, and what does a river do? How does it begin? Perhaps as a trickle? Mm -hmm. There's an energy present, right? And gravity, which is what? Universal law. It's a principle, correct? It just flows. And occasionally, it what? Bumps up against some things. Perhaps somebody's created a dam. <coughs> that damn dam that we put up sometimes. Right? Then we go, oh, nope, gotta stop the flow. Because I did not initiate it. I did not say to life, okay, you know what? It's okay for you to flow right now, but you've got to stop when I want you to. That's not how it works, but that's what we do. So that river is just, what is it doing? It's just being a river. It doesn't know how to be anything but a river. And when we allow ourselves to tap into our nature, our essence, that's God. That's life. That's divine. That's love. It is that very energy and that essence that moves in, around, and through all things. Just like when you take your breath, it is like that river. And it's coursing its way through you into all those places and spaces within you, in your physical and your non physical. And it's going to find a way to move and flow as you what? Open to it. And if you are constricted and you are contracted and you're locked in fear, or whatever other energy you may be pushing against that breath with, it cannot go into those places. <clears throat> Sometimes the physical body gets locked down and then dis-ease, imbalance, lack of harmony and peace and wholeness 
show up. But everything unlike that shows up. Because the flow of life, of vitality, that life force is not able to move, to stretch, to grow, to expand. Your nature is to expand. Your nature is to flow, like I said, like that river. So imagine yourself as a river right now. Maybe we've come to a place where the terrain is a little more level and it's just kind of meandering, right? But all of a sudden, what happens? This is what life feels like sometimes, right? <coughs> we see that there's what, perhaps a waterfall or a drop that's looming in the distance. Do we start to freak out? Asking the question, oh my God, now what am I going to do? Life feels like that sometimes, doesn't it? And so, do you ever find yourself trying to backpedal to try to get to that place of safety because what is looming in the distance is too scary? But what does that river do? What does that water do? It just falls and it flows. And it knows that because its nature is to just be what? Water? The river? That ultimately it is going to what? Return to source. Correct? So I love how Dennis Merritt Jones, he talks about the ocean to which the river flows represents a life fulfilled in our oneness with something larger than us. It's our merging with the source from which we came. When we resist that flow, we become separate is what I believe. We become disconnected. And we begin to stagnate. Have you ever seen a standing body of water where there's no flow to it? What happens? <laughs> it's gross. You're exactly right. What happens to you when you stagnate? When your mind, when your body is static? and there's no longer a flow. And you're cut off from the very source that gave you that breath of life. In fact, it is you. It is life. And when we put a stop to it, parts of us begin to die off. <clears throat> so my understanding around cancer was that parts of me were killing me. Parts of me were dying off. And it was calling me to do something different. It was calling me to look, perhaps, at my life differently. Please hear me when I say there is no right or wrong way to navigate any place in your life. The way you navigate it, the way you become the river or you're on the river, that is solely up to you. Free will. Sometimes we want somebody to tell us what it is we need to do, and as soon as they do, we go, no, thank you. <laughs> and the universe is always offering all kinds of information, endless. That's why I think it's so cool that the river and then the rock present themselves for us to tap into nature, for us to begin to notice what is happening around us, what is happening in us in every moment as I'm in this process of change, as I'm in this transition from one season of my life into another, from one lifetime into another, whatever it is. It's my journey. It's your journey. And none of us do it the same. So if I looked at Asha and I say, you look a little stagnant to me, what's going on? I'd go, Jeannie, really? <laughs> I go, gee, really? <laughs> exactly. And I'd say, why am I recognizing stagnation over here? Or is there any even there? The point is, is when I let go of what I think her life needs to look like, or what life needs to look like out there, when I let go of that, I am open to all of this information that this amazing universe has to offer me. I will pick it up. Not only that, just like gravity is this wonderful universal law and principle, I know some of you perhaps have heard the law of attraction. 
That's universal law. It's been around since the beginning of the beginning of the beginning. And then somebody gave it a label and called it the law of attraction. You've already been dancing in it. Or perhaps not, perhaps you've been sitting out the dance. But when you begin to understand, again, that everything is energy, and that light truly attracts light, it really behooves you to become what? More of all that you already are. It really behooves you to allow your vibration to be one that vitalizes every moment in your life so that you can draw <coughs> to you that which is already yours. Like Sydney mentioned in the prayer, your birthright is wholeness and vitality and joy and peace and laughter and prosperity. It's endless. That's your birthright. But when you are cut off and when you are stagnant and when you close down and life is presenting itself as the rock and you become that rock because you are anchored in and you become what perhaps positional in your life or you have an opinion or you have a belief that you're so anchored into that nothing is going to move you from that. I promise you, life will wear you down. Not because that's what it's intended to do, it's intended to lift you up. But if you had a contest between the river and the rock, guess what's going to happen? The river is going to win every time because it will find a way. Take a look at the Grand Canyon. Exhaustion, erosion, a wearing away. So when we allow ourselves, once again, to simply be all that we are, and to say, I no longer choose to resist. I choose to be in a place of allowing. One of my favorite words is surrender. And I have to tell you, the first time I heard that word, I thought, there is no way I'm going to surrender to anything because that means I am a quitter. And it means I am giving up. And that is not what that word means at all. It means I allow myself to simply be. I allow myself to let it be, as the Beatles would remind us. Let it be. And to love what is. I am called to learn to accept things as they are. As I mentioned earlier, does it mean I necessarily like them? Not always, perhaps. But can I say the only way I believe I can move from this point to this point or to allow myself to become that very change is to say, I surrender, I allow, and I simply let it be. And I no longer have to fight the fight. I no longer have to battle the battle that the world out there has convinced me that I'm supposed to do. I can allow myself to be embraced by this amazing universe that only is for me and not against me. I can bring in that deep sense of inner peace and more joy. I no longer have to be the rock. What are you in your life right now? I think for a lot of my years, I've, I've been the rock because that was what I learned to do. I learned to be strong because anything other than that was not acceptable. It's okay to lay it down and to die unto that which has been, that identity that you have become, and to learn to embody the energy of the river and allow every cell in your body to be teeming with this transformational energy. To allow yourself to know joy like you've never known it before. Ask yourself a couple of questions. What is it that I want? What is it that I deserve? Do I believe I have a birthright to all these things that Jamie's talking about this morning? And then follow that question with, where is my focus? Where I put my attention, where I put my energy, 
is what I'm going to draw to me. If I am attached to something, as a Buddhist would remind us, perhaps it's time for me to learn about non-attachment and to simply let it go. Today, I choose to become the river. How does that feel to you when I say that? When you say those words to yourself? I am the river. How does that feel? Powerful. Powerful. The mighty river. I claim that today. And as I claim that, gravity becomes like the calling of the beloved, like the calling of the one calling me back home to that ocean, to that place of oneness, to my source, where I am replenished time after time after time. And when you've made that peace within, and you're flowing like a river, and you let go of that rock victim mentality that something's happening to you, you have access to all that is, because now you are wide open. Today, as we experience the rain and the refreshing energy that is happening, in the midst of that, there are some powerful energies with tornadoes and storms and such going on. And I know sometimes life may feel like that when change is happening so fast, and some of it is scary. But I invite you to allow yourself to simply flow. Go with the flow and enjoy the ride.